With his victory over the weekend over Benoit Saint-Denis, Hanato Moicano had a big weekend in Paris, but he said he wasn't happy about being taxed so heavily in France. And Hooker inserted himself into that conversation saying, wasn't that your excuse for ducking me in Perth? They didn't offer me the fight, but easy problem to solve title, eliminator in Vegas in December. It'd be a good fight for Moicano because Hooker's right number five and Moicano's number 11, but that's probably why Hooker won't take the fight. Hooker says he'll fight him if they guarantee him a title shot if he wins, but they're not going to do that. They're not going to guarantee a title shot to the number 5 guy if he beats the number 11 ranked guy. There's talk of him maybe fighting Poirier, or he could fight Gaethje, a fight that we have not seen yet. As far as the title fight goes in that division, Mahachev and Sarukian are likely fighting in January, UFC 311. A rematch from 2019 that Mahachev won via decision. This rematch will likely look a little different, but I think the result will be the same. Mahachev by decision. Mahachev has the most title defenses out of all current champions with three. Pereira has two. He's looking to make it three this weekend against Khalil Roundtree. Pantoja has two. He may end up taking on Tyra if Tyra beats Roy Val. Zhang has two. Her next fight has not been announced yet, but Dana White says they're supposed to announce it soon. Drickus has won. He may end up fighting Strickland again next. There's a lot of new champions, so they don't have any title defenses yet. Marab just won the belt against O'Malley. His first title defense is a tough one against Umar. I would have to favor Umar slightly in that one. So aside from Umar, I think Marab beats everybody, but his first title defense is going to be a tough one. Poirier will be fighting Max Holloway on October 26th. Would favor to Poirier in that one, but Max is unbelievable and i also thought he was gonna get knocked out by gaichi and the exact opposite thing happened jones will take on stipe win or lose i think he's retiring so he'll no longer be champion Bolal will take on shavkat rachmanov would favor shavkat slightly in that matchup pennington is fighting this weekend against pena that could go either way pennington is a slight favorite and valentina just won the belt against grasso but her first title defense will probably be against manon and that's a tough competitive fight. It's a good fight. Could go either way. Both the 135 and 145 champions are from the country of Georgia. And the Georgian Prime Minister has announced that he's giving a cash prize to them. A sum of around 367,000 US dollars. That's each for Marab Davalashvili and Ilya Taporia. Marab says he plans to donate this to local charities and martial arts gyms in Georgia. Other fighters on the USC roster from Georgia include Roman Delidze, Giga Chikadze, and Gurum Katataladze. Umar is sure he'll be fighting Marab next. There's no if, there's only one contender and that is me. Marab doesn't have any other options. His only choice is to fight with me and I'm the next contender to fight for the USC Bantamweight Championship. And this fight in November could decide the next title challenger after that. This headlines the November 23rd USC Fight Night Macau card. Alex Pereira has been walking around with a no magic t-shirt making fun of Prohaska's claims that he used magic against him. He's had a pretty magical career so far. He's looking to replicate that magic Saturday night against Khalil Roundtree. Roundtree's a big underdog. I think Alex is going to win, but you really can't count anybody out in this sport. And Vieira is the biggest underdog on the card against Kayla Harrison. In the co-main event, Raquel Pennington's a slight favorite over Juliana Pena. Geez, I don't need two piss breaks on the main card regarding those two women's fights. But to be fair, Kayla Harrison was quite a savage in her UFC debut against Holly Holm. And the other common complaint is Wonder Boy versus Buckley not being on the main card. Buckley would move into the top 10 if he beat Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Thompson's 9, Buckley is 11, Jeff Neal is number 10. He takes on Rafael Dos Sanjos at the next pay-per-view October 26, UFC 308. At the top of the division, Leon Edwards lost his last fight to Bilal to lose the title. Kamar Usman lost his last fight to Hamza, but that was a middleweight contest. And number three ranked Shopkot Rachmanov will be likely getting a title shot next against Bilal. Maybe UFC 310 on December 10th in Las Vegas. Jack Della Maddalena beat Gilbert Burns in his last fight. Colby Covington lost to Leon Edwards in his last fight, that title fight. Colby didn't start doing anything until round four, and by that time it was just too late. Sean Brady beat Gilbert Burns in his last fight. Ian Gary beat MVP in his last fight. It was a close fight, and Ian Gary edged that one out. 
Michael Morales beat Neil Magny in his last fight and he looked very good in doing so. MVP lost to Gary. Vicente Luque is going to be taking on Nick Diaz at UFC 310 on December 7th. Neil Magny lost to Morales and Kevin Holland will be taking on Roman Delize, but that's going to be a middleweight contest. That's going to be this Saturday and if Holland wins, he'll be ranked in two weight classes. Delize is ranked number 10 in the middleweight division. Number 11 is Jack Hermanson who beat Pfeiffer in his last fight and number 12 is Hamza Chamaev who's going to be taking on Whitaker on October 26th. The top of the division, Drikas Duplessis just beat Israel Adesanya. Strickland beat Costa in his last fight and wants to rematch D DDP. Adesanya lost to DDP and Whitaker takes on Hamzat. Amavov just beat Brendan Allen over the weekend after dropping the first round. He looked great in the last two to win 29-28. Bohio beat Cannoneer in his last fight and Vittori lost to Cannoneer in his last fights. Anthony Hernandez and Michelle Pereira headlined the October 19th fight night card and Chris Curtis is coming off a loss to Brendan Allen. A close fight that could have gone either way. A lot of people thought Chris Curtis should have taken that one. The only move is to sue after getting done like this. Maybe some MMA fighters will start doing this, like Cormier suing Jones. Marvin Vittori tweeted this in support of Drikus Duplessis bashing his nemesis, Brendan Allen. But he received some backlash for this tweet. Chill out, everyone. I just meant my guy, kind of. He's white. How does that even make sense? All this racist thing is BS. Definitely many people I don't like, but it's never based on race or color. Also, I don't believe in this word power. PFL's coming to Lyon, France. The Lazy King versus Staropoli is on that card. Staropoli had six fights in the UFC. Matt Brown says that Robbie Lawler is the hardest hitter he's ever faced and there's not even a close second anywhere. Both Brown and Lawler are retired. Lawler coaches at Kilclef FC in Florida. Matt Frivola is sticking around a little bit longer in France after his loss. He doesn't have a problem with any extra shots he took from Ferez ZM after being knocked out. It's hard to understand the intensity and the mindset one needs to have when they step inside that cage. It's the ref's job to step in when necessary. It's not easy to just turn your kill switch off in the moment. ZM's KO was one of the best of the year in the UFC. Maybe he'll get a ranked opponent after the victory. After his victory of the weekend over Roosevelt Roberts, Ludovic Klein has the second longest active unbeaten streak in the lightweight division. Machev is first with 13, Klein is second with 7. Jillian Robertson, who has the most submissions in UFC women's history, will be taking on Luana Pinheiro on November 9th. That's number 12 versus number 13 at the UFC Apex. That thing is supposed to undergo renovations at some point. The plan is to spend $20 million upgrading it.